In this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Zion Smooth 5S AI version, which just dropped not too long ago. In this video, we're gonna be unboxing the unit, giving my first video impressions of the unit and its features, testing its AI tracking capabilities, seeing if the steel motor is as smooth as they claim, and just checking the overall convenience of having a smartphone gimbal with its battery life, portability, and is there even a need with the smartphones today having such great stabilization capabilities already? So buckle in and let's get into this review. So while unboxing this unit, you see that you get a ton of things inside this really nicely well-built case. I do love the lettering that's on the case. It gives that whole funky feel, a really creative vibe to it. So when you open it up, you see the unit itself. It comes with a USB-C charger. Um, I, I'm not too sure if it's 3.0 or 2.0, but again, this is more for the charging of the unit. It comes with an additional fill light, which I really love, and it's all magnetic. These Both these things are magnetic, and I think that is huge when it boils down to like trying to just be mobile and portable in the field i do love the fact that the unit has a fill light already built in and all you have to do is hit the button hold the button down and you can actually turn on the fill light having additional light is always a great thing for a creator or it comes with the ai tracker camera it comes with a stand that you can actually mount onto the bottom of the mobile unit itself and that actually seconds as a tripod stand so you can put this down you can turn on the ai tracking software um, through the cami um, the cami app and from there you can track yourself so it's kind of hands-free if you're doing any type of tutorials or if you're out in the field doing a shoot and you need the camera to track you now the ai tracking itself i did have the opportunity to use it here and there i do like the gestures all right so if you were wanted to go for your tracking before we put it on we actually had to cut it on so you're going to go ahead and hit this icon over here where it says off hit it on and it turn on AI tracking. Now, if you need to figure out what you need to do to make it start working, you just hit the question mark, so you get out to do a peace sign or a hold up your hand. The peace sign will actually start shooting and tracking and the hold up the hand will stop everything from there. It's actually gonna use this right here, which is the AI track. This is what the gimbal is actually gonna use to track your gestures and your hand placement. So for this last thing, I'm gonna show you the gesture tracking. Gesture tracking is basically, if he holds up a peace sign, it's actually gonna cut it on. And if he holds up a stop sign, it's gonna turn it off. So get a little bit closer to the screen and I'll show you what he does, okay? So. Well, hold on a sec, okay. Well, I gotta turn it on, sorry. And it's on. There we go. Um, sometimes I did find like in the sun, it may not have worked as well, but all in all, it does work. I love the fact that you can actually just put, you know, different gestures up and then from there, it'll actually, gra actually grab a picture or start recording or stop recording. So that's always a great thing. All right, so now I wanna show you guys how to melt. So again, this is my iPhone 15, the Zycami app on the here right now. So <clears throat> with this itself, it has a nice size, but again, this is kind of flimsy. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, it's not the strongest when it boils down to like a, a gimbal that you would wanna have on your smartphone. Again, it's built really nice, but just this portion itself, it is kinda, kinda flimsy. But anyway, so, what I like is it extends out far enough to where it goes right around my case. We have here, and you want to have the camera facing out on this side. So the camera's here, and your fills are right here. So now, when you're balancing everything through, the best thing you want to do, you don't want to have it leaning too much this way. You want to have it to where it's nice and balanced where this is not leaning to either side, okay? So I'm gonna move it over, just a hair there, and this little screw right here, up, oh, nicely move just a hair. Let's go a little bit more this way. Now we're balanced. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this in. And you're just screwing this, and this is kind of another thing. I like this screw because you lock in this, this point here, that's the sliding point here. But again, if you over tighten it, I do feel like this can potentially break. So let's go from here, let's turn it on. And there you have it, you're nice and balanced. Now the other thing that I would say, you either have to mount your phone 
in at a vertical orientation or horizontal orientation. You can't do it midway through once you already have it balanced. You have to actually take the phone off. You have to reorientate the actual clamp and then put the phone back on to rebalance it. So that's the only thing I am noticing. There's no button to like, you know, triple click or double click and the phone will go from a horizontal to a vertical format. That does not exist. So you actually have to do that manually. But again, at the price point, I understand where it's coming from. But again, that's just something to keep in mind when you're shooting in the field, that is gonna be a stopping point, which means stop the production or whatever you're, that you're doing. I test out the different modes. This is PF mode and I guess this is actually just tracking to where the gimbal keeps the phone level and I could just turn at the side and it goes from there but it'll keep the gimbal nice and level. Now let's try L which is a, another function to where it's going to lock the gimbal, lock the phone in place. So no matter what I do, the phone will consistently be locked in the same place. And that's one thing I like about the gimbal. This motor is really strong and it actually gives the fact that it's actually holding this phone, which has my case on here. And the iPhone 15 Pro, it is kind of heavy and it's actually just holding it in place. And as you can see, it's going to lock the phone, the screen in place. I could do a complete 360 on the handle and from there it's not moving at all. One other, um, what I'm gonna do is gonna be follow. So follow actually just wherever you turn the gimbal, it's gonna go from there. So it's actually, if you want to go up, it's gonna point it up. If you wanna point it down, it's gonna point it down. And if you go left or right, it's actually gonna give you left or right. All right, and our final mode is going to be our point of view mode. So let's go ahead and turn this right around. So at any given time you want to have just a selfie mode on yourself, it's just tracking you as yourself. And the only thing that you're doing is moving the gimbal back and forth. And it's gonna keep it nice and level to wherever you point the gimbal, that's where exactly where it's gonna go. So I like these different modes. And finally, we're gonna have our um, more like, somewhat of a, like a flashlight type of mode itself so you can get nice and low and the gimbal would actually just track you from there. So it's kind of like you holding a flashlight for itself and you can actually just track everything from there. But again, it's giving you that low type of pan. So if you had a dolly shot or a, um, a crane shot, this is exactly what you're getting right here. So one thing I want to show now is called a vortex mode. And vortex mode is where the gun move goes into like a flashlight mode and you can hit right or left on the joystick and it actually does a 360 spin. So we're going to do a vortex down the hall so you guys can take a look and see what I'm doing, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put it into vortex mode, which is the V on the gimbal. And from there, I'm gonna hit record. And from there, I'll show you guys what it does. Nice. So again, I'm not too sure whoever, who would ever use that. Um, I wouldn't particularly use that in any of the videos that I do, but in the event that you want to do something really creative, like maybe a transition through a doorway or a transition um, from one wall to another. So let's go ahead and do the transition from a doorway, okay? <clears throat> so I'm gonna pull in and I'm gonna vortex out. And I'm gonna show you guys the footage this footage that I actually get from here as well, okay? So you're coming out of the cockpit, let's vortex out of the cockpit. And that would be a cool shot for a transition shot. Only thing that I'm noticing that the lettering on the feature that you're on is really small. Like, I'm the one that has to wear glasses when I'm, I'm shooting in the field. And trust me, I need it because even if it's bright outside, it's not that easy to see. I do understand where the price point comes in. It's under 200 bucks. Um, a LCD screen would have been great. Um, but again, engineering and trying to fit this all into this package and that at this price point may not a lot for it. And I definitely understand that. But that's one of the gripes that I have when it comes down to figuring out which mode that you're on. Okay, so the motor itself, I would definitely say the steel motor makes a big difference. In addition to the new motor that they're using inside this unit, 
it is better performance and it's also better control. It does keep the temperature lower inside the gimbal where you don't feel as uh, where you don't feel it as hot. That is the one thing I would say about the DJI the Mobile 3. After you're using it for a while, you do feel some sensation of heat when it comes down to the motor because again the gimbal is tracking constantly. This it actually stay cool to the touch. This thing can actually hold some weight and it is so quiet. That's one thing I really love about it. You're able to like just really just glide through. Now I do have the DJI um, Osmo Mobile. I can't remember what version I do have. And it is a little bit clunkier than this unit, but I will say the build quality is much better. However, the motor that I'm finding on this unit is one of the best um, that I've experienced on a gimbal outside of, of course, a big Ronin. The zoom function is one of the things I think is actually the best. So as you can see here, I'm actually zooming in on his hands as he's flying. And again, I know I'm using a phone, but you could just tap the screen and just focus. That makes it really cool. It actually makes it really nice and cinematic too, because you can zoom in really slow. So as far as the portability portion of this gimbal, I would say that it's just like any other smartphone gimbal. It is going to be cumbersome if you can't just fit it into your backpack or if you have you know, some room inside the backpack. You do want to be careful with this one, I would say, um, but for the most part, it does have the capability to kind of compact and fold in, which I do like, but it's not a really small form factor, just like the DJI mobile portion where the gimbal the gimbal portion actually folds in which makes it a smaller footprint this does not do that and so you do have to watch what you're putting in inside the bag or you can use the case but if you use the case that's just something additional i used i recently traveled um for work and i was out and i had to actually hold the case in my hand because there was nowhere else i could put it i couldn't put it inside my pelican i actually had a hole in my hand and my backpack had some additional things in there so that's something to just to keep in mind you could possibly put it at the side of your bag maybe inside a water cup holder and then tie it in at the top that will work but again you just don't want to bump this thing because again once you boil down to it it's not the strongest it's strong but it's not the strongest and you could pot potentially break it as well all right so overall i can definitely say that this was one of the units that yeah i actually did like um i wouldn't say that i would personally use it that much um being that i have other uh mobile devices that I'm actually using in the field right now that I really took a really strong liking to. But if I was in the market to look for a smartphone gimbal at this price point, this would be high on the radar because it's not bad. And the AI feature is really cool. But for the most part, I would say that if I was in the market of looking for this gimbal, I would definitely go for it. And if you're in the market of looking for it, it's something that you definitely want to check out. Just a couple of things just to point out one more time is that you just have to be aware that the construction of it, even though it's really great, it is not the strongest. And it does feel kind of flimsy when you take it out, especially when the locking points are on the tilt and the roll, not the rotation, but not the pan axis, but when the two axis is, you do notice like, you gotta shove it just a little bit. And you kind of notice some flex and some bend in the plastic, not the steel motor itself, because that thing is strong as a rock. That is one of the biggest um, selling points, in my opinion, um, to this uh, Smooth 5. S AI. So that's the end of my review. I definitely appreciate you guys taking the time to check it out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the footage. If this was valuable to you, please make sure you like and subscribe. Drop a note in the comments if this is something that you're going to look to get in for yourself or put in your arsenal of things that you could go out there and start filming and creating content with. Down below, I have my affiliate link associated with Zhiyun. I definitely appreciate you guys sending this to me. This video was sponsored by them. Um, and all in all, I definitely appreciate you guys checking out the video. Just remember, I am Jay. I am a creative entrepreneur here in the Atlanta area and owner of Jay August Media, where you just believe that if you're not sharing your work online, if you're not sharing what you are passionate about, you're kind of losing out. So just remember, guys, as I always say before I end every video, just make sure you keep those cameras clicking. Until next time.